Hi guys, welcome back to the MCM <laughs> bus stage. We are live in London. It's a fantastic Saturday already. And just to make it a little bit better, we have two Attack on Titan stars with us. Please welcome Trina Nishimura and Bryce Pappenbrook. <laughs> hey, so how are you doing? Really good. Fantastic. Yeah. How has the con been for you so far? It's been amazing. All of the fans here are so sweet and so polite, and we, we're just really happy to be here. Is that different to the States? I mean, people are great all over, but it's, it's awesome when you go all the way across the world and, and people are extra nice to you. Uh -huh. So, gotta love that. <laughs> yeah. And have you been uh, having the same experience outside of the con? Because I know you've been doing a little bit of sightseeing. Yeah, yeah. I, I uh, got to take my family into the city and uh, see Buckingham Palace and, and the beautiful parks. And it's just an awesome city. Yeah. So, yeah, I've been having a wonderful time. Have you guys been to London before? Uh, I've been to London before, but I've never been to MCM, and the convention is huge. This yeah. is crazy. There are so many people here. Somebody yeah. told me it was like 160,000 people. Very possibly, <laughs> yeah. And a lot of fans of Attack on Titan, I imagine. Have Absolutely. you guys seen a lot of the capes and all that stuff? The cosplay? Yeah, there's been some really great cosplay. Uh -huh. I see a couple people in the audience cosplaying uh, <laughs> Titan now. Yeah! <laughs> Army! <laughs> Aaron, no! <laughs> we had a running gag in the studio that that's all Armin would ever say. Like, all he says is, Aaron, 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 wait, wait, wait. Aaron, Aaron, no! Like, Aaron, no, Mikasa, no! And so, like, it, that's uh, a running gag. Oh, that's fantastic. <laughs> I love how you guys are just going straight into your voice as well. <laughs> <laughs> no problems whatsoever. <laughs> I mean, it sounds like you guys obviously have great kind of chemistry together. And have you guys done many sort of conventions and things? Or has it been a while since you've seen each other? Yeah, you know, actually, we got to know each other on stage, on panels, at right. conventions. So, because when we work, we're uh, by ourselves in the booth. So we don't interact in that way. And right. uh, I'm from Los Angeles. Trina's from Texas. Uh, Texas. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we hadn't met before Attack on Titan. And we just kind of passed each other in the hallway. Mm -hmm. Um, but we really got to know each other and, and grow close at conventions like this one. Oh, fantastic. And um, for you, having done now quite a few conventions, is there any sort of particularly standout conventions or moments for you, a uh, convention? A uh, convention, I think it's, it's really interesting. I, I am, um, we didn't even, since we didn't know each other in the States, we actually had to go halfway across the world to become friends. Uh -huh. We first saw each other and like, we were like, oh, you're, you're Bryce. And you're, he was like, you're Trina. When we were in Australia, randomly. Oh, wow. And so like, I think that the, the fact that we had to go across the world just to be friends, like this is my funniest convention moment. Yeah. <laughs> Bonded in Oz. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and um, having met also a lot of fans here, are there any particular sort of fan moments for you that stand out? Yeah. Did anything stand out for you? Um, I think all of the cosplayers here at MCM are amazing. And, and the cosplayers that we get to meet all around the world are so great, right. um, obviously. And we're very, very lucky to have such amazing fans. But the cosplay here is on point, man. Yeah, it really <laughs> it's is. ridiculous. I, I love seeing everyone's artwork, like yeah. when they bring uh, uh, things that they've drawn. Because mm -hmm. I am horrible at drawing. Oh, yeah. It's just real terrible. Even yeah. stick figures are just horrible. <laughs> so I, I really appreciate good art, and it's so cool to see everyone's work. Yeah. Have you guys, because obviously as voice actors, I imagine you don't generally dress up for work. <laughs> have you ever thought about dressing up as your characters, Aaron and Mikasa, and have you done that? Uh, I actually cosplayed as Aaron one time. Uh, <laughs> there was this party that we threw in Los Angeles at a club. It was a cosplay party, and they had just announced me as Aaron, so I had to. Oh, and wow. uh, I, I really appreciate cosplayers because they put a wig on me and it only lasted for about two seconds. I was like, uh, bye bye wig, and just threw it off. It's so itchy, I, I don't know how you guys do it. Um, That's true, actually, yeah. I, so I am no, I'm no professional cosplayer either. <laughs> and um, so obviously, uh, the fans are here. We are here to talk about Attack on Titan. It's, uh, I guess, a super hit anime show, really. Um, for those who haven't seen it yet, can you describe the premise? Wow. Um, let's see. Uh, humanity is inside these walls, and there's giant naked zombies outside the walls that want to eat them. Poor titans. 
<laughs> Sound about right? <laughs> that was an accurate description. <laughs> uh, I, I think that Attack on Titan is uh, the... I think what draws people to Attack on Titan, what people really love about it, is that it has so many human truths within the storyline. And, and yes, there are giant zombie naked people that are trying to eat you, but um, it's such a good show. And I, I, I think that if... I don't think that you can do it justice in just one sentence. Yeah, it's yeah. really tough. Yeah, you just got to watch it. <laughs> and then um, I have to say, you know, watching it, the Titans, they're pretty bone chilling. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they're all terrifying with the exception of one Titan. Oh, this, <laughs> this is my favorite Titan. Yeah, the derpy Titan. This guy. <laughs> 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 fantastic. I love the derpy. I like that he like comes around the corner and is running into stuff. Yeah, this is awesome. Like, this is just a derpy titan. Like, that would be the most hilarious titan. Like, you know he's going to eat you, but yeah. he's real cute. Real yeah. cute. You're going to die, but at least you'll be laughing. Right? That could be like the comedy spin-off, right? <laughs> derpy titan. Derpy titan. Tries to attack. Yes. <laughs> a half hour of him running yeah. with different backgrounds. <laughs> right? Or like a music video. Yeah. Like, doo -doo 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 -doo. I love it. Sorry. Sorry, you should do that. They have to get a theme tune and everything just for him. That would be amazing. And then, but one of the interesting things, I mean, you mentioned the sort of humanity of it. And in a way, watching it, do you think that the humans, some of the humans, are probably a worse threat to humanity than the Titans? You know, that's a uh, really interesting observation because I, I think as the story progresses and evolves and we get into season two, um, I think that there are a lot of, uh, because we don't know where the Titans come from, we don't know like all the origins, but there are a lot of different um, antagonists that are coming up and a lot of different things that are, uh, plot lines that are happening and shifting away from the Titans being the primary threat, right? right. And uh, it, it certainly mirrors society now and the world that we live in today, which is really interesting yeah. uh, as far as classism and, and socioeconomic status and safety therein. Um, so I think that I think the walls and, and everything else, because there are multiple walls within the city uh, and the, the economic classes being surround like in the center, like the higher class being in the center. Right. I think it, I think that the as the story progresses, we'll see more and more of uh, people being the bad guys more than the Titans. So do you feel like the concentric walls almost um, denote the socioeconomic classes? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, 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 that's exactly what it is. The, yeah. the richest people live in the safest area yeah. in the center. Yeah. Surrounded Jerks. by everyone else. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's Precisely. like, oh, you're just, you're just the puppy chow for them. You're yeah. going to be fine. <laughs> yeah. You're and fine. On the, on the outside, they actually have little divots that stick out, and that's the poorest people because mm -hmm. that's where it's the least safe. Right, right. And, but I'm wondering as well now, going into season two, are we get, I heard that we're going to explore possibly a bit more about the people living outside the walls. Is that right? That's really interesting. I, uh, both of us have no idea what's going to happen. So we're, we're both super excited for the season to come out. Yeah. I haven't read the manga and neither has Trina. So right. no spoilers, please. No spoilers. No spoilers. But everyone who has comes up and says, you know nothing about this show. And it's, it's true. We know absolutely nothing about what's going on. Every episode just creates more questions and, and right. makes you more confused. And I love it. Yeah. Well, what are you interested to see in season two? I, it's so dangerous because the moment you say you're interested in something or that you like somebody in the show, you're like, oh, I really like that girl. She's so not, oh. <laughs> like, oh, that couple, they're such a cute couple. They seem so, oh. Eaten. <laughs> like, Aaron's mom is so nice. Yeah. You, oh. Like, <laughs> it's just unfortunate. So the minute you say, like, you know what I'm looking for? Oh, no, they're gone. Like, yeah. uh, no, it's I'm looking forward nice. to more characters for sure. Yeah. In development, more characters. Less deaths? <laughs> I'm sure there'll be just as many. Or more. I'd like some of the questions answered. Yes. Like, what's in, in the, the basement? basement? Right, yes. Will um, we ever find out what's in the basement? Oh, somebody told me today that they know what's in the basement. They were like, oh, I totally know what's in the basement. I was like, that's amazing. They were like, do you want to know? I was like, oh my God, please don't tell me. <laughs> because you want to go on the journey with the character, right? Like, as we record, as we uh, get to see more scripts and learn more, um, you're inhabiting that character and becoming that character is so important uh, as far as the performance goes and being right. able to go on the journey with the character is awesome 
But you must have some fun theories about what's in the basement. Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah? Any, They're probably any wrong. <laughs> They're probably wrong. Um, I, I think it has something to do with, your obviously, your dad and um, the origins of where your shifting powers came. Uh, there might be a monster. I don't know. Maybe it's Trump. Maybe Trump's in the basement. Maybe. <laughs> they like the answer. <laughs> yeah, Trump's in the basement. <laughs> well, he soon will be. <laughs> Somebody put that man in a basement. For the love of um, so we're going to give you guys a chance to ask questions in just a moment. If you get Yay. your questions ready. Um, <laughs> but I have to wonder, with all the different uh, titans out there, let's, let's um, exclude Derpy Titan for now, because I know he, he's a special character. <laughs> Do you have any other favorite titans? Santa Claus Titan. I love Santa oh, Claus yeah? Titan. <laughs> or no, 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 that little baby Titan. That little fat baby Titan. Oh, the one that Aaron punts. <laughs> <laughs> I like that one too, yeah. <laughs> oh, fantastic. Okay, so if you guys want to stick your hands up for me, and I'll come to you. Ooh. Hands up. Awesome. <laughs> Hi guys, thank you for coming. Um, Trina, I loved your performance in Steins Gate, and thank Bryce, you. I loved you in Danganronpa. Thank you. If those um, two characters for you, Bryce, Nagito Kameda and Makoto Negi, and for you, Trina, if Makise Kirisu, if all three of those characters were in the Attack on Titan world, how do you think they would act, and would they survive? Ooh. Uh, I think Nagito would just walk straight into the Titans, like where the Titans are, and they would just miss him every time because he's so lucky. <laughs> He'd just be wandering around and they'd just be like stomping all around him. <laughs> and boulders would be like hitting right next to him and he'd just be like, mm -hmm. interesting. <laughs> interesting. <laughs> like everyone else is freaking out and getting smushed and he's like, wow, that's crazy, man. Like, <laughs> I think, okay, I think Nagy would point at one and go, you got that and be stomped on. <laughs> I think if Makase Kirisu was in, uh, was in the Titan world, She'd probably be really upset and confused because there isn't any technology that she could build a time machine with. So she'd just be like, wow, this is not great. And then probably Boulder. <laughs> okay, next question over here. Um, this, okay, thank you again for coming. Um, this for question us. is more of a request. Could you perhaps recreate one of the scenes from Attack on Titan? Sun lines? Yeah. yeah, sure, yeah. sure. Uh, Do you want to start or should I start? <laughs> uh, why don't you go ahead? Okay, so um, one of my favorite moments in the show is the first time Aaron transforms. So he, like, punches himself out of the Titan's stomach. He, like, punts the baby Titan. That's the He's, best like, part. stepping on this other Titan's neck. <laughs> and he goes, get up, get up. Let me kill you again and again and again. Ooh, that's loud. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's always terrifying when he does that line because Bryce is such a happy, sweet guy that when he does it, I'm like, oh, God, he's so angry. Um, so Amika's line would be uh, right after, no, sorry if this is a spoiler, earmuffs, um, when she thinks that Aaron is dead, but he's not dead, but she thinks Aaron is dead. She's trying to rally everybody to go and, you know, fight Titan. So she, um, she says, um, <clears throat> I can do it. I'm strong. Real strong. None of you come close. I am a warrior. That's her. <laughs> That's fantastic. Right of applause. <laughs> it's not as scary as yours. <laughs> okay, another question over here. Hello, and thank Hello. you for being here again. But my question is, have you ever recorded a scene where you thought it was like, you didn't actually feel it, it was like kind of fake? Because some of the things in Attack on Titan aren't really relatable, like being eaten alive. So right. what kind of scenes do you feel that you didn't really feel you could relate to? Um, so something that we couldn't relate to. So uh, I worked on a game called Fire Emblem Awakening, uh, and I play this character named Henry. And Henry is insane, uh, like really insane. And the first line that I had is Henry. I, I knew nothing about the character or the game. I just saw a picture of him holding a crow and, and looking happy. And my first line was, yay, blood. So we, as we were coming up with the voice, I was working with uh, Patrick Seitz, who was the director that day. Patrick is awesome. Um, and he's like, let's come up with a voice. So I, I just gave it a shot and went, yay, blood. And he's like, mm, you're more excited about that. Yay, blood. He's like, mm, like a hundred times more excited than that. Yay, blood. <laughs> and that's Henry. <laughs> 
so I couldn't really relate to wanting to be murdered that much. <laughs> I think I think actors in general like will find something like they'll find a way to get the voice and they'll find a way to get there. Um, but I think the the character that I had very little reference for was named Shelley from a show called One Piece. She's a she's a horse, uh, but a giraffe horse kind of creature that's like 18 stories tall. And so Mike McFarland, the director, was like, oh, I have, a great, I have a great new character for you. She's amazing. She's amazing. I was like, oh, that's awesome. It's One Piece. I love One Piece. Everyone loves One Piece. And so I went out and I was like, oh, who am I? He's like, you're the horse. Oh, that's great. I, I love being the horse. That sounds awesome. Um, so what does the horse sound like? Like, a, <laughs> he's like, no, I don't think so. And I was like, okay, so a creature noise? Like, <laughs> he was like, no, I don't think so. And I was like, so wh what do you want me to do? He's like, be the horse, Trina be the horse. I don't know how we got there, what I ended up sounding like, but I just remember like his, his point of reference was be the horse. Be the horse. That's good direction. I like that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nice question. Um, this one's for Bryce. Um, sure. How angry are you in real life on a scale of Marco to Erin? Well, say that one more time. How angry are you in real life on a scale of Marco to Erin? Uh, probably much closer to Marco. Uh, but Aaron, when I'm sitting in traffic in L.A., <laughs> I hate traffic. I like to imagine you in L.A. traffic, because uh, if you've been to L.A., it's, it's, it is the worst traffic in, ever. Uh, but I like to imagine what people see, like, as they're driving by you, like, just like the angry Aaron voice, like, get up, yeah. get up. Like, you can't hear it. You just see Bryce, just like, looking at me. <laughs> I will kill you. Get out of my way. <laughs> right? I don't want to see that. That's terrifying. That would scare me. Right? Yeah. Like, you're just driving. You're, like, singing a little Madonna. And you're like, is it? Oh, my God. Like, <laughs> no, I don't like that. I don't like that at all. I think that's another spinoff, isn't it? Aaron in traffic. Aaron in traffic. Next question. What was the most funniest thing you've ever done with your voices? The funniest thing we've ever done with our voices um, I think my favorite thing to do, uh, it's, it's a strange job, right? Like, what do you do for a living? Oh, I make funny noises. Um, so my favorite thing that I've ever done with uh, voices, like a friend of mine was busy, like, oh, you're so busy. And she, uh, I called her and texted her a few times, and I, I wasn't able to get a hold of her. And I needed to talk to her about her bachelorette party. I mean, it wasn't anything like life or death, you know? Uh, and she was planning a wedding, super busy. So um, I, because I couldn't get a hold of her, I was like, well, the, the only, there are two things people can't avoid, right? Death and taxes. So I called her work where she was managing, and I was like, hi, this is uh, Samuel, S uh, what did I say? It was Samantha Smith or something. I can't remember what my name was, but hi, this is Samantha Smith from the Internal Revenue Service. I'm going to need to speak with Mrs. Swindell immediately. And she like got on the phone. She's like, oh, hi, this is Rachel. And I was like, oh, hey, girl, what you doing? And she was like, really, really, Trina, the IRS, that's what you went with? I was like, yeah, that's what I went with. <laughs> I love that. It's <laughs> awesome. Um, when I was working on Blue Exorcist, um, we did this thing called bad anime reactions. <laughs> and basically... I wouldn't let the, the director or the engineer or the producer know I was going to do this. My line would come up, and it would be like a small breath that they wanted. Like, at one point, he's dialing this phone, and I would just give a horrible over-the-top reaction like this. <laughs> and I just kept doing it over and over and over, and then the rest of the cast started doing it oh, also. No. And there's a... a there's a video of all of them together. <laughs> it's just, you know, every time he looked one direction, it'd just be like, <laughs> his eyes would move and I'd go, ooh. <laughs> so, that, I love that. Does that like strain your face after a while? <laughs> you know, I really want to have a camera on me when I work because to, to get to my characters, I have to make the face that they're making. And anime faces are really strange. So I probably look like a psychopath, <laughs> which is kind of, I, I really want to see what I look like. It's, it's got to be funny. Well, speaking of that, have you guys thought about doing much acting in front of the camera? Uh, I have done a little acting in front of the camera. I've been acting since I was nine, and he's been acting since he was seven? Uh, you yeah. started at seven, right? Yeah. That's crazy. Oh, my God, you have to hear this story. I'm sorry. I don't know yeah, what, no. where, were you, where were you going with that. But you have to hear how Bryce started his voice acting career. It's amazing. 
Um, well, my, my dad was a voice actor, and he was working on Power Rangers. Uh, he was Rito Revolto, uh, the skeleton dude on Power Rangers. Power Rangers, hello! Yeah! <laughs> um, Obviously. And at the end of his session, the director was like, I need a kid's voice. And my dad's like, he's a kid, throw him in the booth! <laughs> and that's how I became a voice actor! <laughs> Yay! Child labor! <laughs> right? Like, that's the best reference ever. Like, oh yeah, my dad was working on, I don't know, the, one of the most popular shows of all time. And then they were like, oh, we need a kid. Your, your debut as an actor was on Power Rangers. That's amazing. That's amazing. That is fantastic. Gotta love that. Um, y you spoke about being in front of the camera. Um, I actually am part of something called Confessionals. It was a Kickstarter campaign that was just funded. And that shoots uh, at the beginning of next year. Uh, all right. And it's, it has a bunch of other voice actors in it. So it's really fun for us to be in front of the camera instead of just in front of the mic. Brilliant. Yeah. And uh, Trina, have you got any other upcoming projects? Um, none that I can talk about yet. It's, <laughs> it's so hard to remember what, what, so we sign NDAs, non-disclosure agreements, so that we don't right. tell people about things before we're supposed to, uh, which is hard because we talk for a living. So it's like, oh, let's talk about everything. Um, <laughs> So any uh, announcements that I have, I always uh, put up on my fan pages or on Twitter or Instagram. So if you follow either Bryce Pappenbrook or Trina Nishimura on Instagram or Twitter, then all of our announcements come out there the moment we can tell you about it. And there is definitely something really exciting coming up that I would like to tell you about but cannot. Fantastic. Well, one of the things I think is great is that you two sometimes co-run competitions on your Twitter for yeah, fans. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Have you got anything running at the moment? I don't, yeah, I don't think I have anything on Twitter right now. Do you? I don't have anything right this moment, but, but maybe I to. should. Yeah. <laughs> maybe after that's this. A, that's a great idea. Thank you. Go to Twitter. There might be something up there. Oh, yeah. We should totally do something. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> now they're definitely going to check your Twitter I know, later right? on, right? Like, yeah. No, we should do something for like today. Yeah. Good idea. Or not today. I don't know. Maybe it'll be today. I don't know. <laughs> so um, I know we have to wrap it up, but one last question for you. I know, Trina, you'd previously mentioned that um, when somebody had asked you what regiment you want to be in, you said you wanted to be the captain of the food regiment. <laughs> I like eating. Which is a fantastic answer. <laughs> like, and um, obviously, guarding the stores of food. But if you guys were about to go into battle on Attack on Titan, what would your last meal or potentially Ooh, last meal be? Ooh, yeah. I love this question. Can, can it be any? It can be anything in the world. Anything it doesn't have to be the Attack on Titan world. Anything oh, you want. This is a good question. <laughs> I have to think about that one. I really like to eat. Like I don't think you understand how much. And I mean, Bryce can. Bryce and I can put food away. It's oh yeah. Oh, fantastic. Um, um, I would want to eat a pile of cinnamon rolls, oh, but that's I, a I good only one. want the centers. <laughs> So yes! just a pile of the centers yes! of the best cinnamon rolls That's ever. Such a good answer. <laughs> yeah. That is I such mean, it's a your last answer. meal. You can do whatever you yeah. want. Yeah. You're right? never gonna see another cinnamon roll again. <laughs> Gosh, a pile of cinnamon, just the centers. I like that. Um, okay, I want. I would want. Um, I would want a pepperoni pizza with sausage and jalapenos on it, and then on the side, I'd like a side of nachos, preferably beef nachos maybe with some fajita chicken and then I would like some ramen but tonkatsu ramen and I'd like spicy tonkatsu ramen and then some dandan dan noodles any desserts oh yeah actually if, as long as we're gonna have dessert um, I want a chocolate milkshake but I want real whipped cream on it I don't want the can whipped cream and then um, oh I'll take some of Bryce's middle of cinnamon rolls that sounds delicious uh -huh. share. thank you um, and then probably a cupcake but a cupcake with stuff in the middle not just a regular cupcake I can eat all of that. I would eat, like, now I kind of want to have all of that for lunch. I feel like people should have restaurants where you can go to and you can be like, pizza and nachos and a burrito. And now I want a burrito. And, like, some ramen. Like, you can have everything. It's, some, I'm not, I think, I, is it lunchtime? I think I'm hungry. Yeah. I think that's, like, Jimmy Spices you're describing there. <laughs> Buffet Ooh, style. Yeah, yeah, and some Indian food, too. <laughs> or what are those yeah. things that Just you, pile it all on top of Just each on other. the pizza. Just well, put it all on the pizza. Yeah. We'll roll it up. <laughs> a pizza with everything a pizza literally. with everything on it ooh and some mashed potatoes <laughs> on, on the oh, top, on the top. 
<laughs> that is a fantastic answer and a brilliant end to our panel. Aww, thank you so thank much you. for being here. Everyone, please give a warm round of applause to so our guests. Thank you so much, you guys. Thank you, guys. Shamira and Bryce Papenbrook. Whoop, whoop. <laughs>